What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is day five of the recaps of Cross, episode five, what happened at Ramsey's. Now, we know that there's a birthday party that's been going on, and from the moment we met Ed when he was helping out L, he did give his card to Alex and said, hey, you know, come out to one of my birthday parties. And now that we found out that Ed Ramsey is actually Harry Powers, we're going to that birthday party. Now, before we jump into this and we break down episode five, if you like this kind of content, thrillers, murder mysteries, solving cases, then you're on the right show. Cross might be the actual show for you on Amazon Prime. So if you could do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time we upload. Make sure you hit that like button and we're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Now let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap, day five of episode five, what happens at Ramsey of Cross on Amazon Prime. Starting off the episode, we see everyone over at Ramsey's house getting prepared for this magnificent birthday party. Now they got this big hog over here. They getting it prepared. They got the kid choir out here singing. And then, well, Ed has this mask on that he broadcasts to all of these weirdos. And well, he's getting a little bit of fellatio in the bathroom while he's getting prepared for this magnificent birthday party. Now, before the party, Ed never misses an opportunity to go down and talk to Shannon because he's about to get the book back, which he has now. Shout out to Bobby Trey. And he goes down here and he's about to fix her teeth because Eileen, she had teeth that were kind of like an overbite. They were too more close to each other. And he's just letting her know, I need to get a mold of your grill to match the grill that I got for $169. Of course, Shannon is fighting back. So before he can get the mold of her mouth, she's trying not to open up her mouth. And well, he grabs her nose. It's like, well, you won't be able to breathe. You keep playing these games. But he's going to get this grill because he needs to get all of this done. He's a perfectionist. The politician that's been helping out, Ed, the one that he blackmailed that was about to help him out with the Yellowstone agenda, she's over here and he's just welcoming everybody into his home because he's a very, very powerful person within this city of D.C. So now we see that he has these connections and we're starting to see everyone that he's pulling together to use their resources to benefit from. L shows up. And Ed Caesar, he's like, this guy over here, Lawrence, this right here is a huge donor. I've been prepping him all week. Later on tonight, this evening, you're going to be able to pitch your foundation to him, and we might be able to get this money. Remember, he said they were going to raise six figures, but L isn't the only one that showed up because she did have a plus one. Well, before they show Alex showing up, three days earlier, him and John, they're in the boxing ring. They're just doing a little bit of sparring stay in condition, and they're going over the case. And well, he tells John, listen, I need you to go to Indiana. There's someone up there that wants to talk that may know some information about Ed Ramsey. The only problem is he only wants to talk in person. So John is saying, why am I going to Indiana? Why don't you do it? He says, because I'm going to Ed Ramsey's birthday party. I'm L's plus one. So they're going to be attacking this on two different fronts. Of course, we know that John, he's going to go to Indiana and talk to whoever this person is that grew up with Ed. But the reason that Alex is staying here is because he wants to try to get in the mind of Ed Ramsey. So he has to go over here and just see if he can make the killer slip up and give up any information on the case. John shows up to Indiana and he sits down at this little diner and there's some people looking at him. Looks like they've never seen black people before. But in comes a gentleman by the name of Dex. And he says he knows Ed because they grew up with each other same age, same street, their parents wanted them to be friends. He always knew that something was wrong with Ed. But one day, Ed got sick, and when he went over there, his mama sent him with some soup to give to Ed. Now, the story has it that in their city, birds kept up coming up dead. Now, they were dead, but they had their feet cut off. And when he went over to Ed's house to give him some soup, he said all of the birds' legs were laid out on his bed like baseball cards. Now, when Alex shows up, he sees his chief here. Now, remember, Ed is a very powerful person here. And when chief sees Alex here, she's thinking, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I don't know Ed like that. I'm L's plus one. They've been working together. He's actually helping raise some funds. So this is a work relationship that they have, but she knows how Alex is. And she knows if he's somewhere, it's for a reason. It's not just, I'm out having a good time at Ed's birthday bash. Now, this is where things started to get interesting when I was talking about the chief saying that Alex is here for a reason. 
Now, you know, these rich people, these socialites, they get together. We have the chief of police and Alex Cross, Detective Alex Cross, should I add. And they want to know what is going on with this serial killer? Is this a mere death and this missing girl tied together? But of course, they can't give away too much information. Now, this gentleman is saying anything that we say, it will stay here inside of Ramsey's home. Now, this is giving Alex a chance to start poking at Ed to see if Ed will fold or give up any information. This is the opportunity that Alex has been waiting on. Now, we can't give away too much details, but we do have a profile of the suspect. Now, Ed and Alex both know that they're after each other, but they aren't 100% sure what all each other knows. Now, Alex's description and profile is a white male, mid-40s, very suave, smooth individual, powerful, a lot of connections. Think he's smarter than everybody. Not to be confused with an idiot or a dummy. Very well spoken, an artist per se. Now, when you looked over at Ed, they panned over in the camera. We seen that Ed was getting a little nervous because he doesn't know all the information that the police had. The conversation continues on, and now we know about the birds, but he also says that Ed had a camera that he kept around. Now, the reason Dex didn't say anything about seeing the bird legs in there is because on that camera, there was footage of his father, Dex's father, and it wasn't with his mother. So he never said anything about the camera or about the birds because he didn't want his family to be broken up. Now, there's also a guy by the name of White Mike up in Philly that will probably be someone else you need to talk to. And if you can't get a hold of White Mike up in Philly, you should talk to his mom. So we find out that Ed's mother isn't unalive like the story he told at the damn first time we met him with L when he gave him the card. John gets on the phone and calls Alex. Alex got to step away. And he's like, wait, you're going to visit the mother? Yeah. So, of course, Dr. Cross, he's going through his checks. So he had to eliminate his mother in his mind so he could become the man that he is. This is good. This is valuable information. So everything is starting to pile up and then we'll be able to sort it out and put it in the bin that we need to get this conviction. Dinner is about to start. But now that we know that Ed's mother is alive, what does Alex do? He goes and does a little bit of research. He gets into Ed's office. He's taking photos of different things. Then he actually breaks into one of these drawers. Inside of this drawer, there's an actual box in here. Now, in the hallway, we do see Ed because Ed knows that Alex is running around the house. And as I mentioned earlier, they aren't sure who has what information, but they want to both watch each other. And inside of that box, there's a letter. Dear Eddie, I want to thank you for your help. I'm doing fine. And it has blood on the top left of it. And as I mentioned, L said that Alex went to the bathroom, Ed went to snooping around, and he sees a light on in his office, and he opens the door, and he catches Alex in his office. Now, they get in here, and he catches Alex, and he's asking Alex, does he have a warrant? He said, oh, no, no warrant. I was just going to the bathroom. I got lost. This is a beautiful big house. Now, Ed's looking at him, and he's thinking, okay, you want to play this game? Well, how about we have a little bit of this Pappy Van Winkle? I hear that it's your favorite whiskey. He's like, how did you know this? Because Ed's been doing his research also. So now what they're having is a stare down match. Who has more information? Who is going to make the other fold? Who is going to be standing triumphant when all of this is done? Now they sip a little bit of this and it's getting very, very interesting, but we don't get anywhere. They're sizing each other up at this moment. They're trying to see who's going to break eye contact. But Ed says, Let's go ahead and put this Pappy Van Winkle down because there's not enough to go around and go out to this dinner. After the stare down, Ed goes into the basement to blow off some steam. This is my house. Ooh, he can't come in here and do this to me. Questioning me, talking to me, snooping around my office. Then he breaks a $10,000 bottle of wine. Shannon's in the chair. She's looking like, what the hell is going on? Y'all having a party upstairs? But she's really trying to figure out how the hell can I get out of here? Because if there's people in the house, this is the best opportunity for me. Ed, he is upset. Now, after this, Ed devises a plan. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to embarrass him. So what he does is he comes back upstairs and he proposes a toast. And he says, I'm pledging to this anywhere sometime fun for L. And 
the reason I'm doing it, and he just names off a random person, but he actually tells the story of a young kid that grew up in poverty, both of his parents on drugs, in and out of jail, him coming from the mud to becoming someone very spectacular, having two beautiful young children, a little boy and a little girl, a loving wife, only for her to be shot down. He described Alex Cross's life, but he used someone else's name. Now, everyone here doesn't know that this is Alex Cross's story, but L and Alex, they're sitting here and they're listening. They're saying that's eerie familiar, but you got to keep your composure in a situation like this. So Ed's trying to get under his skin before Alex can get under his. Now, after the dinner, we see L and Alex get up and go talk to each other. Now, when they go and talk to each other, L, she's, was he talking to you? He was poking you. That was his story. Well, Alex eventually comes clean and says, listen, I'm not going to lie to you, but I think he is the fanboy. He's the killer. So now L, she's upset. You let me take money from a killer? You're doing this? This is the only reason you wanted to come so you can get close? And he's like, listen, I had to do my job, but this is the only way I could get close. If I was to tell you about the investigation, you would be acting weird. So now she's upset that Alex didn't say anything and and came over here just because he wanted to do his job instead of, okay, you've been protecting me and keeping the nonsense away from me. So she's upset. They're still in the house. And Alex knows that Ed is more than likely the murderer. And we have to try to solve this case. But Elle is upset. John is over there with Ed's mother. She has dementia. She can't really remember a lot. The light's on, but nobody is home is what he says. Now, he's calling to get some clarification from Alex. What do I do? He said, there's something that you can push. There's a little trigger. You've got to get her to say something. We need to get some kind of information out of her because she hasn't spoken to Ed in years. But we definitely need this to pursue it. So John goes in there and he reads a Bible verse to her. And as soon as he reads her favorite Bible verse, she snaps to it. It starts reciting it with him. So that's what really triggers her right there, her religion. Now, of course, we know that Ed had to make her disappear to make himself believe that he is stronger and more powerful than what he was. Now, Ed, he's still working behind the scenes. So what does he do? He pulls L in, tells L, we're going to go talk to Lawrence. You're about to pitch right now for your foundation. Now, this guy, Lawrence, he actually donates 60 percent of his proceeds to protect the blue. We know that L, she's been out there protesting against defunding the police. So right now, it's kind of all against her. And she's a little nervous because this is just off the top of the head. This isn't like a formal setting or anything. We're just here having the conversation. So it's getting a little ugly for her. And she's already nervous because she knows that Ed is potentially the killer. But luckily, Alex shows up and protects her from all of this. After Alex saves L, him and Ed have a conversation out in the hallway. And he's saying, hey, Ed. You're doing all of this. Now he's trying to get up under his skin because of what happened at the dinner table. And John put in the work, the Bible verse. It actually helped. And now we have a happy birthday song from mom. Happy birthday, dear Eddie. Happy birthday. So Alex got one up on him. And now this has Ed a little nervous. You know, you're in that suit, you start to sweat a little bit more. So he has to figure out how he can one up Alex. So right now it's just a huge back and forth, but it's low key and no one really knows that this is going on. Well, Shannon was down in the basement. As I mentioned earlier, she knew that people were upstairs. This is the chance to try to escape. She knocked the chair over, pulled one hand loose, got a piece of glass from that bottle he broke. And when he came in, she was hiding behind the door, stabbed him up. Now she's on the run. She's trying to get the hell up out this basement. This is one of the only opportunities Shannon has had to try to escape from here. She cuts him with a glass bottle. He's on the floor, all cut up. And when she gets upstairs, remember the politician? She's outside smoking a cigarette. She's like, help, let me out of here. But the doors are locked. Ed gets up, chase her down. And since Shannon knows that Ed needs her to be perfect, what does she do? She takes that piece of glass that she has and she cuts her face so her face won't be perfect and messes up everything that Ed has going on. But once Ed sees her cut herself, he punches her, knocks her out and tells the politician, you didn't see nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't remember nothing because he still has that blackmail over her. 
He has to go and shower up, change clothes, staple himself together because let me tell you, a gash like that is going to hurt. It is going to hurt like the dickens. They're saying, Ed, the birthday cake is on the way. Remember, he's the host with the most, so he has to show up for this cake. But he has to play off this injury. Ed gets changed up, and of course, now it's Alex's turn to try to dig a little bit deeper. Hmm. You smell different. You showered up. You changed your shirt. All your clothes are different. I hope you're not cocky enough to have Shannon here in the house. Ed's talking about, I don't know what you're talking about. But since they're one up in each other, he looks at Alex and says, ah, I can't wait till you look like a pumpkin. And Alex is saying, what are you talking about? He's like, just wait on it. And ding, 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 everyone's phones are going off. And Ed tells Alex, you need to answer your phone. So this back and forth is good because it's an inside thing between those two and all of us viewers. No one else in the house knows what's going on. Well, it turns out a video was leaked of Alex harassing a young man, beating him up. Now, this is the report that John filed on him where he thought he was just going to see a shrink, but he ended up getting suspended. So now everyone is seeing that Alex actually beats up victims because he was trying to find out who killed Maria. So this is finally released, and the chief is saying, Alex, you better not say another word. You need to leave. And everyone's like, oh, Alex. And Ed's saying, well, maybe you should go. So he got the last laugh, at least for now. So Alex is trying to explain to everyone, he's the murderer. He's the fanboy. Ed is. And everyone's looking at him. We just seen the footage of you whooping on a victim. We don't care about who this murderer might be or might not be. You are the problem. So security escorts him out. And damn, this is a bad look for our boy Alex because he's, he's, on, he's the only black person here. All right, there you go. The recap for episode five. I know that this is Alex Cross's show, but from this episode, who got up under whose skin the most? Was it Ed or was it Alex? Saying Ed is not wrong because we know it's Alex's show. But as of right now, I think Ed got the one up on him and got him kicked off the job. So let me know what you think. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for episode six recap. I'm Old IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.